What's going on, everybody? It's your girl, Sheree Nicole, with another episode of Just a Thought with Sheree Nicole. We are still in season four, guys, and I'm going to be honest with you. I was planning on cutting this season short about three episodes ago, but the people keep coming. The good guests keep coming, and today is no different. I'm sitting here with one of my favorite human beings, relationship expert, prophetess, mother to many, the one and only Love McPherson, and I was teasing Love and Tiffany who is her manager, daughter, all of these great things, One of become one of my good friends. And I said, if y'all come to Atlanta one more time, if you come here one more time and get on one more podcast, that is not just a thought with Sheree Nicole, I'm never talking to you again. And Tiffany said, I got you. So here we are. We are here. Tiffany, the, this is her first time asking me, and I immediately said, oh, yes, I'm fine. And so, it, it, so I said, why didn't she? I said, did she really want me, or is she just trying to fit me and she says no mom she really wants you i was like well i'm here for sheree of course <laughs> fit you in you're you are you kidding me are you kidding me i am so excited i'm so honored and um it's fun because this is valentine's day uh, yes. week i guess child you know it's just, just another day for me but i figured you could minister to my to me as well as those who are listening whether they're in a relationship or not i thought it would be a fun time to talk so thank you for doing this it is such a pleasure, and I am looking forward to this because this is a time of year, Valentine's uh, Day. It is a time where we need to have some reminders, have yeah. some tips. Some people will manage it great because they're in relationships and mm -hmm. full of love. Others will, it's a challenging time. So yeah. let's talk about it. Okay, before we get into that, I do want to just check in with you because it's been interesting to see your stock rising. Like, a lot of <laughs> us have already known Love McPherson doesn't play. You're amazing. <laughs> um, you've touched so many people. But it's really been cool to see just not only your evolution, but your elevation. So how are you kind of handling this influx of more clients, more press opportunities, more people kind of pulling on you. What's that been like for you? It's been a great opportunity to do what I love, which is to influence people. I had to make a, actually a conscious choice to accept fame hmm. because fame is never, is never the goal. You understand? Influence is. And yeah. I wanted to influence marriages. I wanted to influence singles. I wanted to influence people's healing hmm. and not influence my rise so managing it has been a very intentional effort on my part to always remain relevant first of all and to always remain authentic yeah um it's very important every, every august i take the entire month off and i go inward and i begin to seek uh how i will influence the next year mm -hmm. I, I so that i can start preparing the last quarter but in August, it's time of, of, of um, just a sabbatical where I'm just, you know, making sure that I'm on the right path. Do I need to change anything? Hmm. Do I need to slow some things down? Do I need to speed some things up? Do I need to add and subtract? And that's what I do every year. So I manage it by, first of all, managing me. Yeah. And then managing what my expectations are for the next year. Hmm. So let's let's go to this past August when you took your vacation. What was what was the biggest lesson or takeaway that you learned about yourself that you're applying in 2024? I realized that um, I needed to slow down and reevaluate where my efforts were, hmm. were going. And the, one of the biggest takeaways I'll say, it was not necessarily about me, but my direction. Hmm. Um, one of the biggest takeaway, and I haven't shared this with anyone, so you get an exclusive. Um, I was Actually, it's a time of introspection. It's a time of prayer. And I felt in prayer, God saying to me, um, this year I want you to focus more on, instead of working with clients about the trauma that has helped, you know, that they have experienced in childhood, the childhood yeah. traumas and things that are affecting their relationships, I would like you to speak more to mothers so that they can avoid giving the traumas to the children that they are raising. Wow. So I, I know that in 2024, God has given me the opportunity and it, it already manifests mm -hmm. uh, for me to, to have more of a platform of a uh, proactive yeah. um, effect on 
the next generation that that is going to be raised up into relationships. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. You said a word. You said proactive. And so let's talk about dating a little bit, lack thereof <laughs> relationships. As you're evaluating the scope of what's happening on the dating front, and, and again, we're in a very interesting time anyway, um, how are people, from what you've observed, being proactive? And what's one area that you would like to see them be more proactive? Um, unfortunately, I don't see as much proactive behavior mm. Mm. as I'd like. I see a lot of reactive behavior. Mm. Now, there are some pro proactive behaviors because proactive equals take, uh, making sure that your individual, yourself, is healed enough in order to manage a couple. Yeah. Okay? So what you bring to the couple is effective and you have the skills. So those people who are doing the work, that is definitely a proactive move. Um, however, you know, making sure that the understanding how the work they're doing directly relates into relationships sometimes can be challenging. And so I actually see in, in, in every person that sits in my chair, I can see how their childhood traumas or a past relationship trauma or a betrayal trauma, even racial traumas mm -hmm. and DNA. I can see directly how it affects their romantic relationships, their parent relationships, their kid relationships. So I think that um, that's the area that I would like to see more proactive uh, uh, work in yeah. is t connecting the dots, mm. connecting the dots. Mm. Well, you, you're trying to help the people connect the dots in uh, your book, What Are We? The Five Stages of Dating, and I was asking, love, how do you apply this to someone, <coughs> myself, <coughs> who is not at any stage, um, and this is not on purpose, okay? Everybody knows some people say, I'm, I'm single for a reason. I'm single because I want to be. That is not my testimony, but for those that it's yours, God bless you. Um, so you talk about these five stages, love, and I want to ask you, even before we get into this book before somebody cracks open these pages what are some things that they need to keep in mind or be doing actively before they can even open this book and take themselves and this book seriously well i think that before they actually um crack that book i just want them to have a want to hmm. i would like them to work on their hope mm. hope is hope as opposed to discouraged if you approach this book uh, with a negative mindset or, you know, just kind of a pessimistic attitude, you may not believe that you can actually get somebody. And I'm I'm really addressing not in, in this book of how to get someone. I am mm -hmm. addressing some a lot of this book, especially stage one, is maybe why you have resisted the opportunities to get someone. Hmm. Let's dive into that. Yes. So, so would you say that it's it's plausible to think that some of us are not necessarily at stage one, not because we can't get there, but simply because we haven't embraced maybe the person that's in front of us to even get us in that in that place? Do you think we're passing up on a good thing, love? I do, and I talk about seven fears. Hmm. I also talk about uh, six ways we attract. Some of the fears is. Sometimes when a good person comes, we will think it's too good to be true. And so we will we will self-sabotage it. We will micromanage that relationship to find a flaw that maybe you, your love could cover that. That That is mm. something fixable. The fact that he's wearing square to toe shoes and he should be wearing a different type of shoe. You could, we could, we could go to the store. That's fixable, okay? Especially if he wants to listen to you. And so, Wait, love. I need you to dive into the square toe shoe. Are we talking no, no, K and G? Okay, like, you all, what are we you talking? You all are witnessing case in point. For her to stop me it's very and challenge funny. the square toe shoe shows you that there there is more to this thing than the square toe shoe because we are minutes away from Lennox Mall and all we need to do is have a shopping trip, okay? 
And so if the only problem with this guy, let's just say he's a good guy. He's a hard worker. He's making good money. He loves God. All these good things. And he got square toe shoes. And you going to sit there and have the nerve to take podcast time to ask me about square toe shoes. We got a problem here. Love and I, is and getting she, me together. Oh, okay. God. <laughs> Cut this off. I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't know. Tiffany, you can't come back. You all cannot come back here. <laughs> And so here's the thing. So, so good, too good to be true. And then, you know what? A lot of times we just feel like, you know, do and this this wouldn't be necessarily yours, but but um do I have the glue to keep them? Mm. We fear that. Like, okay, I know I can catch them, but maybe some childhood trauma that says you're not enough will make you feel like but I keep getting ghosted. I keep, you know, I've had yeah. a, this this happen and that happen. So you fear that you're not enough. Or maybe somebody even told you you were not enough in your childhood. Somebody might have told you in your past relationship as they were breaking up with you. So we have to understand some of the fears that we're going through. And and, and even the fear of releasing fish, the, uh, releasing the goldfish, okay? Mm. We don't really chow down here in America on goldfish. Correct. And because they have too many bones in them and they also can carry a type of tuberculosis. So if you are sitting there and you pull the goldfish out, somebody who is a raggedy, and you scared to throw them back into the pond, then you're kind of desperate. Mm. And so people are running because they're like, I know I'm a goldfish, but you holding on to me like I'm, you know, like I'm a salmon. salmon. <laughs> <laughs> And so we, don't, we, we can't feast on goldfish. And so just kind of before you even crack the book, but you don't even have to wait to crack the book because the book is going to crack you. Mm. And so what My you God. just need to do is open the book and, and identify if you see some of your fears there. Mm. I'm cracking it open because you, you already jammed me up, um, <laughs> love. Dating exclusively. This is really interesting. I'm not trying to give the whole book away because I understand that it is for sale. It's okay. Um, but I do want to. I do want to sit on this um, because I think it's an interesting, interesting thing. You say still romantic relationships expose things about you that you didn't know were there. The key is to learn, acknowledge, and grow. Repeat this cycle every time you discover that you are underperforming in one or more areas of your relationship skill set. I really want to speak to self-awareness because I think sometimes it's easy or oftentimes it's easy to look at somebody else or mate, partner, somebody we're dating and say, ah, they're the problem. I responded this way because they're the problem. I can't be with them because they, 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 they. When we think about when you find that person and when you're really working towards something with them, can you speak to just really the divinity and self-awareness? Why it's like you cannot have a healthy relationship unless self-awareness is a constant in that relationship. It is it is so crucial to 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 actually be self aware, self aware to the point where there's no incongruency, hmm. where you may think this is you are aware of yourself, but you also may be completely wrong about yourself. Yeah, you may be thinking I am such a nice person. I do not like drama. I just I am I can people get along with me, and your friends are saying no, no. we don't. <laughs> we tolerate you. You're a good person, but you you like to keep up mess, mm. and so you can think you're self aware, and but but you need to to really make sure that you have a second opinion. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm talking about se second opinion from people who care about you or are professionally able to assess you. Love it, love it. Because otherwise, you will walk away believing something about yourself sometimes that really is not true whether it is you are worse than you think or you're better than you think yeah let's talk about accountability in that same vein what are some of the guardrails that people need to keep in mind when it comes to yes i want to be self-aware i do have a village of people that i can trust but also you want to make sure you're not putting them all up in all of your business with your partner so what are some guardrails that oh, we need yeah. to be conscientious about that's a really good question because you definitely want to place boundaries mm -hmm. between that and when i said Self-aware. I didn't say couple aware. I uh -oh. said self-aware. Okay. Uh -oh, uh -oh. And so be checking on yourself more than you have them checking on your mate. Mm. And especially your husband or your spouse. Yeah. Because people don't have the grace to love your your spouse the way you do. Not even your mother and father. Mm -hmm. Because if if as a mother, 
if somebody is, uh, if I hear my daughter crying, it's going to be the natural mama instinct to rise up like the karate kid <laughs> with my hands in the air and one leg up, okay, to try to rescue her. Yeah. And so, and so when you come and she make up with you, because she's going to go back, and then she bring you to the, the, the table, everybody at the table looking at you side-eyed, hmm. unless you really know your daughter is, is full of drama. Mm-hmm. And so what <laughs> I'm saying to you is that make sure that you have a boundary yeah. on how much you share for people who do not have the grace to love your spouse and love your mate the way you do. Yeah. So let's stay here. What if you have been made aware that there's a couple in your life that you love very much, you love them both mutually, there's some things going on that they have shared with you? Where is the guardrail there in terms of how to engage with them if they're asking for some level of advice or support? What can support look like without crossing that line as well? Stay within the boundaries of of the ask. Mm. Don't go further and don't become emotionally involved. And I have to do that, actually, as a counselor. What happens is, you know, I have to make sure that I don't give them more than they can handle, Mm -hmm. more than they can receive. And when I'm finished, guess what? Whether you divorce and file for divorce an hour after we end our call, I'm not emotionally involved in your relationship. Right. So I can see. I told them they should have did. No, you do not become emotionally involved in a relationship. If they ask you, tell them the truth. Say, well, I, here's my truth on this. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. If they ask, if they don't, you listen because sometimes people's relation they they're just venting, but they're not asking you to help. They're not asking for you to give your advice. You wait till you hear them uh, ask for your advice before you give. Otherwise, give your ear. Mm-hmm. Don't give your hand if they didn't ask for your hand. That's the help. Don't give your your mouth if they didn't ask for your your advice. Learn which body part they they are talking to. Mm. Your ear, your mouth, or your or your hand, and know the difference. And if you don't know the difference, ask. Say, how would you like? What would you like? Do you need any help? Do you need any advice? What is it? I just, sometimes people just want to talk. Hmm. Now, the people that are on there, Kevin, Tevin Campbell, can we talk for a minute? They are ready for Valentine's Day. Either they are already in a relationship or let's speak to the people that are like, I think I want to make it official now. It's time. It's Valentine's Day. It's a great time to go on Instagram and Facebook and change my relationship status. As people are entering into the precipice of what they believe will be their next big thing, their relationship, their love walk, whatever the case may be. Um, What advice would you give, especially in this climate, to new excited couples? What I would say is, first of all, hopefully you've been reading my book Mm -hmm. and and you are at that stage because this is what, what happens. The first stage is attraction stage. That's before you ever go on your first date. So I, t- I talked to you about some questions you should ask. That should be only the end of the first that 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 part is making sure I'm OK, you're OK and it's worth it. Mm-hmm. At the moment after you end that first date is when you go into the second uh, that you, you're dating, but not exclusively. OK, mm-hmm. so you're talking about someone who is either going to stage three, which is dating exclusively or in, about to become engaged. But for those in stage three, you're crossing over from stage two. Mm-hmm. You've been dating. You're like, OK, I think we're some chem- chemistry. I want to make it official. What I want you to do is I want you to reflect before you go, before you go into the stage three. Mm-hmm. Did you find that this person had what you needed in order to be able to trust them? Do you have what is needed in order to the skill set to be in an exclusive relationship? Hmm. An exclusive relationship is very different from a non-exclusive relationship. Yeah. So if you haven't, both of you all need to be looking at working towards each other. And in that, that stage three, this is what you should be preparing once you get there. Yeah. Learn your mate. Learn their love language, learn their uh, money languages, learn their personality types, study your mate because everybody has exclusive needs. And so you can't just take paint a big brush over that, but begin to learn them. Watch during stage three. If they know how to be, if they're not a serial cheater, 
if mm-hmm. they're because you can't really dis- determine that in stage two. You can dis- right. determine certain areas of character, but they're not exclusive to you, right, so, so you, you can't know. see right, that. Right. But in stage three, before you go take it to another uh, stage, if in the fact that's where you all are going, you want to be looking at those different things. Yeah. You want to be looking at how they support you. You want to look at how if they have the skills to actually make a vow and keep it. Hmm. If they are sensitive to your needs and you will need those skills if you decide one day to have children with them or something like that. Or if you have children and they will share your children. So it's a lot of different skill sets, relationship skill sets. If they don't have it, they're willing to work for it. Nobody has to be perfect because nobody's perfect. We're all working on something. But the main thing is that you are willing to continue to develop the skills that you have in order to work together. So a lot of people, not a lot, I'm going to say a few people, okay? I'm not going to throw a lot out there. That's a big word. But it's it's a few people out here that are spinning the block, love. They, they, they didn't work out with the person at first, and all of a sudden, a few years down the line, they done came back around and said, hey, now, we're we going to try this again. Um, what say you to the spin the blockers out here? <laughs> and and let me tell you, that that's a... That is actually a trend for 2024. Yes, it everybody's is, doing it's, it. It's called back to the future dating, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so what happens is this. The st- uh, statistics show that actually 70% of them will not work mm. uh, if, that's a if, if they have not done some work towards what broke them up. Hmm. So you will have a high rate of success if you say, you know, I remember I was real selfish back then. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, fearful of, you know, I was be under, you know, I had been traumatized. I hadn't done any work. You do the work and correct the behavior that broke you up. Yeah. And I'm telling you, the, the rate of success is very, very high. However, if you don't, the, the chances are very limited because as soon as you get close again, you will remember what you happen to have forgotten yeah. about that person. You're like, oh. Now That's I know why, why we, I broke up. up with you in the first place. <laughs> Get gone again. Leave me alone. Block your number. <laughs> but it's not a bad thing. But go back to people who have done the work. So love, <clears throat> I just, I'm not trying to put myself on blast, but you know, it, we try to be transparent here on my show. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, and me and you have had conversations about this before. The talking phase, I feel like, <laughs> for those who are unfamiliar, that is when Somebody waste your time, kind of, sort of. The talking phase is you just talk to this person all the time. You're kind of like situationship like, but you're not in a relationship, and everybody's well. Somebody in that situation is usually dragging their feet. So we got some some talking phase people that are coming into this Valentine's Day, and some of them have some decisions to make. Love, it's either hey, all right, we're gonna try. Maybe they have to be the person to initiate. Hey, I'd like to take this further. So on the other hand, somebody might be saying, hey. I'm done. I'm not I'm not going to keep talking to you for, for for 2 years trying to have me a Valentine's Day in a relationship. This is a fool. For you, do you put a cap on the talking phase? Do you think people should say, "Okay, I've been talking to you regularly, somewhat exclusively for 6 months." That's long enough for you to you and me to be able to decide if we want to be exclusive. What say you about the talking phase? Oh, yes. I absolutely um definitely especially okay here's the thing from back in stage in the attraction stage stage one Mm -hmm. you've already told them where you're going like i intend to go all the way to marriage this Mm -hmm. is this is the road i'm on now they right then had an opportunity to say oh yeah i'm not gonna really go in that way so i know you're a hitchhiker i'm not gonna pick you up okay (laughs) so we 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 good Mm because i we were we were uh honest Mm -hmm. now they say okay that's that's area that I'm going that direction too. Let's go see if we can ride this, you know, all the way to the end. Mm-hmm. Now, by the three to six months, really it's around three mm-hmm. that you should know. Mm-hmm. And after six months, if you don't know me by now, okay. And so, so what I'm saying to you is that what are you looking for? Mm. What what is your standard? And that is a real question. Like how will what does it take to you to you know and you know in business is key performance indicators KPI yeah what are the key performance indicators in this relationship that will alert you that I'm the one and that you are ready to make this exclusive yeah or 
are you enjoying the 2.5 relationship of I'm kind of in the exclusive sitting on the bench mm -hmm. while I'm waiting for you to decide when you're going to come out of the game. Come, uh, uh -oh. So, um, so yes, you uh. do need to make sure that you don't waste all of your pretty in, in two when somebody has not discovered by now that they should have you and escort you over to three. It's a couple men that's going to get blocked right after this. As soon as this airs, <laughs> you're getting blocked. No, okay. And you know where you are. Have I'm tired of talking, love. Now you want to have therapy. Let's have it. I'm tired <laughs> of it. I've already had the conversation. These men be out here lying. Not all of them. I love y'all, but some of y'all are not honest. You tell them up front what the deal is. Oh, yeah. Like you said, I totally get it. I understand. I'm going to, I want to do the same thing. We then you go down the line, love. It's months down the line. They lied, love. They don't want that. They just want you. they just want everything but that. They like you, but they ain't ready and they don't want to lose you. So they just drag you along and put the yes. little character in front of you yes. and talk about how they not ready. Don't get me started, love. Don't do it. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I love the fact that you say I will cut you off. I will take your goldfish self and throw you back in the pond. And so you you really, really do. And here's the thing. Make sure they understand. This is not about lack of love for you mm -hmm. or lack of life for you. It's about love for me. Absolutely. And I know what my goals are. And I wouldn't allow anybody to stop my business goals. Why would I allow you to stop my relationship goals? Mm. If I came in right now and decided I'm going to stall your podcast or if I'm going to stall your career in some way, you will go around me. Don't park with people at a stop sign and, and because it said you're not supposed to turn until they move. If you are parked and you and you can't move and your car is 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 in disrepair, mm. I'm going to go around you mm. and violate the rules of the road. Okay? So do not park and you know by now we should be going. Come. Somebody ought to shout. Tiffany is over here in the corner shouting. She, <laughs> when Tiffany gets to doing her little, mm -hmm, that's right. Mm, I know I know, we are doing our thing. I, I want to speak about courtship a little bit, love, because those lines, in my opinion, have become a little blurred. Um, we look at different dating apps. I'll stick with Bumble. No shade to Bumble. Hey, y'all. But, you know, as many people may know, on that, the woman actually makes the first move. Yes. And so there's been a lot of relationship conversations around women being the ones to initiate. What do you feel about where we sit culturally with courtship? What it, what have we gone away from that we really need to re-implement? And what's actually working even as the dynamics of our culture around dating are changing? I, I really think that, um, and studies are actually showing that um, online dating has really, a, a lot of the anxiety of dating has actually happen around the online dating yeah because there are so many more chances for rejection mm -hmm. and rejection is one of our greatest fears so now when we put the, the 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 power position into the hands of the woman men are actually experiencing what we've experienced for a long time the swipe pass we've been swiped pass a lot yeah we've been not good enough a lot and they have been in a power position. But when you give that woman the ability, it can kind of jolt someone who's had power privileges. Hmm. A lot of times we want to use that word privilege for race. But we also have to see sometimes when we exert other type of privileges. And I'm just saying this. It, this is what it should do. I understand what it does. Sometimes it will put uh, resentment. Yeah. It will put uh, insecurity, lashing out, and you know sometimes it the the, the norm it won't men won't not talk about hurt and things like that. Mm -hmm. They'll talk about anger and and things like that. Yeah. And so, but but we we it requires us as women to have a higher level of responsibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We need to be sensitive. We need to first consider ourselves. Remember how it felt and be bigger. Hmm. Okay? Be 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 bigger and be better than we than we've experienced. Yeah. Okay? Um also men should say maybe I need to grow. Maybe I need to do uh more. We've always put ourselves under a microscope. Well, 
What is it that I need to improve? What is it that I need to do better? And and a lot of times that was physically. Oh, my lashes, my weight, my this. Yeah. And we were always, you know, this this whole microscope. And I'm not telling men to, to have to necessarily do all of that, but there can be some emotional growth yeah. that can take place that could, could be an advantage to you. Learning how to, that you know, how to be flexible in how you date and how you communicate. We are all we all should be working on something. But yeah. women, the growth should be that don't just take it for granted. Don't clown men. Don't mm-hmm. do uh, be negative. You know, let's work as a team yeah. and understand that socially and the way that God even created us, we are better together. Yeah, and not separate. And so let's not create these clashes within the genders where we cannot come together. Mm and express and, and show love. And I'm not, you know what, I'm not sure if that really answers your question, but it, um, does. it just, I just think that as we, the power shifts in uh, the dynamic shifts and the opportunities shift, mm-hmm. we all need to shift, but not for the negative. Right. I we agree. need to shift for the better. Yeah. And, and you talk about power shifts and I, I think I'm under the belief that some of that has been a direct result of a lot of, women are really pushing. When you look at how many of us are getting these degrees, many of us now become breadwinners in our households um, and just very busy. And I remember having a conversation with you before about dating. You were like, Cherie, could it be that because you're in the entertainment industry, maybe you're looking to be entertained? Because I was speaking to you about, he's nice, but he's boring. He's just not, I'm just not feeling him. I'm bored. And so I'm looking around and there's a lot of peers that I have in in my industry and other women I know that aren't in the entertainment industry, but they're, they're working women, they're busy, they're, they're entrepreneurs. And a lot of them, myself included, are single women who desire relationship. I could even say maybe even on the other side with very successful driven men. It's a lot of single men out here who want a relationship, but they're kind of bouncing around because they're busy. What say you to those who are coming into this holiday, just leave, leading very busy lives because they're chasing their dreams or entrepreneurs or whatever, who are looking to connect but who aren't able to, who are just who are just sitting single, like a sitting duck, but desiring connection. What are some of the things that we need to keep in mind? First of all, make sure that distraction is not an easy way out to mask your fears. Come on in. I heard Tiffany go and do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, then. <laughs> and okay. S- and it, because the truth of the matter is, if you, and we hear women say this all, if he really wanted you, he'd make the time. Is Does that apply for us too? Mm, come on now. If we really wanted relationships, would yeah, we make the time? Absolutely. Would we put ourselves out there or do we fear? And so, and I'm so glad you brought up what you said because we, I, all, I see so often people insert their gifts into their relationships. It can work for good, but it also can work against them. Yes. For instance, one of the things we were talking about is you're you're trying to produce relationships, not produce a relationship. I didn't say that. Produce. The relationship, because you're a master producer. You're a master podcaster. Tiffany, stop shaking your head up and, and down. And, and instead of producing <laughs> what you expect on a date, mm-hmm. you have to let it happen organically. And it may not be worthy of a podcast, and it may not be a rating on it, but it could be a really good guy behind somebody talking to you. Tiffany has to get out because her <laughs> yes and an amen and in the corner is getting on my nerves. When, when love is ministering to me directly, Tiffany, you got to calm down. This is hard to ingest. Some of this is tough. Y'all, are, you all are getting an interview and a therapy session in real talk. Um, I, I want. <laughs> I do want to um, talk about the love boat. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can get on the cruise ship Me myself. Too. Um, we got great? to work on that. We're gonna pray um, about my finances. Hallelujah, and the Lord will provide. But you are doing something very, very fun. It's a weekend cruise. The love boat, loving me at sea. And guess what? You all have time. This I don't know if it's yes, a layaway or not, but it's October 11th through the 14th. 
First of all, layaway too. We come got on, layaway, layaway. Play, y'all. Come <laughs> on, black folk love layaway though. <laughs> I'm like, a youth. <laughs> um, so, so what? Why did you want to do something like this in particular? And then for those who may be considering signing up, for those who have already signed up, what can they expect from the cruise? Let me tell you, I the love boat has been my dream for probably five years, mm. and I am just bringing it into fruition. Congratulations, that was that love. August, right? Congratulations. Okay. And I'm looking forward to the love boat because it's not just for singles. It's not just for married couples. It's not just for couples. It can be for families, but it is loving me at sea. And everything we are doing, we're having a dynamic itinerary of full of, of things to do. But we're not going to take you away from doing your thing either. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but we're hoping, you know, if, if if you are Stella, you can go ahead and get your groove on. Come if on you in. Need to. If, if, if you are there just to relax and have some me time, you are doing that. If you're there to bring your kids or bring your mom, whatever the case may be, you just enjoy yourself for that weekend. And you know what the special bonus for me is? I will actually spend my birthday weekend with you all. Oh, I love that. And I don't that. want it to be about me. You don't have to celebrate me. I just am, that's going to be a joy to have my dream fulfilled yeah. on my birthday weekend. And so the love boat is all about loving me at sea. And we are going to be talking about how to love you better at sea or in, and on land. And mm. we're going to be talking about relationships. We're going to have fun. We have game nights. We have uh, all kind of welcome. We have gifts. We have uh, it's music, entertainment. We, we have everything. So you don't want to miss the love boat. And you can find that on lovemcpherson.com. And I you, love it'll it. just take you right on over there. Hold me accountable, love. I, I got to get on this boat. You got to get I, on this boat. We take it out of Miami. If you want to stay after oh, we get I off the boat, Miami. you can, you can oh. hang around in there for a little oh, while. Oh, I could be at South Beach right after. Hold yes. me, a, love. I'm sitting here next to you and right across from you. You're hearing me. Look at me in the eyes. Hold me accountable so I can get on this boat. I'm, I'm going to make it happen. I'm really, really excited about that. And before I let you out of here, I do want to ask you, um, for those who are looking, you know, February the 14th, square in the eyeballs, whether they're in a relationship, whether they're single, whether they're grieving a relationship. We often don't talk about that. People going through separations, divorces, maybe even widowed, widowed, however you want to put that. Um, what's on your heart to share? One of the things I wanted to say is, you know where you are during February 14th. You know your status and not just the status of your relationship, but the status of your heart. Mm-hmm. Whether it is a sometimes almost traumatic to have to face this that month because there are some people like in November, you know, Thanksgiving, it's difficult during yeah. those times because of losses and things. Yeah. You know your status. And what this is, I, I need you to manage your status accordingly. First of all, right after the, uh, uh, February 14th is the highest level of breakups. Hmm. That that occur the first of the month, like right after the new year, yeah, and 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 and, and February fourteenth, because people compare their their relationships. So if you know, you already know what your relationship is. Do not have unreasonable expectations. Mm. Do not expect February fourteenth to somehow fix your relationship from a broken person and a broken you that has never been fixed. This is a process, not a day, not Ooh. an event. The second thing is, if this is a, a, a hard day for you, please, I, I, I implore you to turn off social media that day. Yeah. Focus on you. Literally turn off all of your, your, your social media and then just, you can just, you know, do Netflix. You could do yourself. You could take yourself for spa treatment. Mm-hmm. You can sit up in the bed with your pajamas. You could do, you can take your friends out. You can have Galentine's Day. Yeah. Whatever you desire to pamper you on that day, go ahead and do it. But don't get caught up into watching others and, and it, it do something to you and make you hurt more. Mm-hmm. Also, love is not just romantic. There are so many ways to show love it can be you can show love by babysitting if you love children mm-hmm. by babysitting for somebody who will go out you can buy a, a go and do something nice for a senior person or elderly mm-hmm. you can do something f- at, at a homeless shelter you can do something for a friend that just you know needs encouragement sow a seed of love yeah so that you can reap the experience of love back i love that love mcpherson in case some people are like oh my god I needed this. I need more of this. I, I don't. I know your therapy uh, calendar, your client list is is very very thick. It's very full. It's a long line. But in case people want to connect with you further, 
in case they just want to follow you, your page is very fun on Instagram and Facebook. How can they stay connected with you? They can stay connected with me by um, reaching out to me at lovemcpherson.com. My groups are open. I do that on a monthly basis. Mm-hmm. It's a subscription book, uh, uh, group, and we talk about love all the time. It's called the love seat. So you sit in the love seat and and, and, and learn about love. Um, not open for new clients because, as you said, the, yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. That's, that's but Yo, it's closed. I got plenty of books. I've got the love seat. I got the love <laughs> boat. I got the the social media. So you can still get all the love. <laughs> I love it. Love McPherson. You know I love you. I appreciate I love you, you doing too. this. Um, y'all, I met Love McPherson. This was, Tiffany, what was this, 2018? Um, didn't even know how much we were actually connected. Turns out she knows my mom's whole side of the family. Oh, yeah. We've been family ever since. So <laughs> thank you for doing this. I know we'll do this again for all the fellas out there with square toe shoes. Holler <laughs> at me. Yes, holler at her, y'all. Holler. Let, let me see if she learned anything during this podcast. <laughs> it's just a thought. It's just a thought. It's my opinion. It's just a thought. It's just a thought. Get out your feelings. It's just a thought. It's just a thought.